Welcome to the starboard engine department. Uh, I just wanted to show briefly what's going on in here. Some of the changes that we still have to make before we can head off to Croatia. One of them is a big deal. When we were doing the electronics in our engine compartment, take a look at this rod that goes from one engine room to the other, one engine compartment to the other. It's the rudder uh, control bar. It's an aluminum tube that runs all the way across the length of uh, our boat under the transom. And it's a hollow bar. It's not very thick. But what happened was this groove is in the back side of the bar. So it was turned this way. The top of the rudder arm comes up through this tube here. And it connects to a big bolt and our autopilot connects to that. The top of the rudder tube comes up, connects to here. This bar connects to this tube like that. And so when one rudder turns, they both turn equally. That's what happened. So these also have limiting controls so that they don't turn too far. Your rudders don't turn too far. We had a metal plate that was coming up here. And when this would turn too far, the metal plate would stop this bar from moving. And it eventually wore a groove in this tube a really bad groove. It's almost right here all the way through the tube, which would essentially cut this tube. If the tube failed, then we would lose rudder control completely. So what we've done to try to alleviate this problem is we had two solid pieces of aluminum made for us that fit exactly inside this tube. And this side has the aluminum, I'm gonna call this an aluminum core now, has the aluminum core in it and you can see that it's safely in here. It'll go to about right here. It's got a tapered end to it so it's not gonna wear through this tube anymore. So we have to put this back together now. We're gonna uh, lift the boat up and then put the rudder back in, connect it back to this arm, connect it back to the uh, hydraulic system for the autopilot. And then the limiting uh, mechanism that we're gonna use now is not a metal plate for these to slam against, so we'll run into this again, but we're going to use uh, two pieces of Dyneema cordage uh, at angles so that the uh, rudders will move together and they'll limit the ability of the rudders to reach their maximum angle in the same place. But uh, the Dyneema will prevent any kind of damage to this bar ever again. It's just, it's terribly damaged right here. Um, I'm fairly confident that by putting a solid piece of aluminum in inside this tube that it's stronger than it was before. Um, so I think we've come up with a really good solution, but that's one of the things that we have to fix before we go to Croatia. This uh, shouldn't take too long. We just have to get some timing down with putting the boat in there. We have to have a jack uh, this big hydraulic machine comes over and lifts our boat up about a meter so that we can put the rudders back in. The top of the rudder tube comes up, connects to here. This bar connects to this tube like that. And so when one rudder turns, they both turn equally. That's what happens. So these also have limiting controls so that they don't turn too far. Your rudders don't turn too far. We had a uh, metal plate that was coming up here and when this would turn too far the metal plate would stop 
this bar from moving. And it eventually wore a groove in this tube, a really bad groove. It's almost right here all the way through the tube, which would essentially cut this tube. If the tube failed in a storm, then we would lose rudder control completely. So what we've done to try to alleviate this problem is we had two solid pieces of aluminum made for us that fit exactly inside this tube. And this side has the aluminum, I'm gonna call this an aluminum core now, has the aluminum core in it and you can see that it's safely in here. It'll go to about right here. It's got a tapered end to it, so it's not gonna wear through this tube anymore. So we have to put this back together now. We're gonna uh, lift the boat up and then put the rudder back in, connect it back to this arm, connect it back to the uh, hydraulic system for the autopilot. And then the limiting uh, mechanism that we're going to use now is not a metal plate for these to slam against so we'll run into this again but we're going to use uh, two pieces of Dyneema cordage uh, at angles so that the uh, rudders will move together and they'll limit the ability of the rudders to reach their maximum angle in the same place but uh, the Dyneema will prevent any kind of damage to this bar ever again. It's just, it's terribly damaged right here. Um, I'm fairly confident that by putting a solid piece of aluminum in inside this tube that it's stronger than it was before. Um, so I think we've come up with a really good solution, but that's one of the things that we have to fix before we go to Croatia. This uh, shouldn't take too long. We just have to get some timing down with putting the boat in there. We have to have a jack. Uh, this big hydraulic machine comes over and lifts our boat up about a meter so that we can put the rudders back in. Now, one of the other jobs we have before we set off for Croatia is when we were hooking up our new wind sensor up there we happened to knock off the mast completely the anchor light and while that's a real bummer to knock the anchor light off of your mast it was a mixed blessing because we found out that there was uh, the plastic housing for the light was badly damaged to start with and it was probably just a matter of time before it fell off so Though we have to replace it, it's not such a bad thing because we found out that there was a big problem. So we have to order a new anchor light and install that. That's not a big deal. That should just take an hour or so. The big problem is finding the anchor light and having it delivered. We still have a lot of the lockdown restrictions in place here in Greece and getting parts delivered is still a big problem. It's not as bad as it was in January it was terrible in January. Um, so we're hopeful that we can get something delivered within a couple weeks. And it only has to go 30 kilometers, so uh, fingers crossed that we get something delivered in time. Our boat is just disgustingly dirty. Uh, a lot of this dust is from the Sahara blowing across the Mediterranean. You get this red dust all over your boat. Uh, you can see it really, it's just everywhere. And uh, so we're gonna power wash our boat. That's not a big deal. So we're okay doing that. It's just another thing on the list to do.
This is the cistern for the town. It's really cool looking, even those stairs going down into it. But all around the cistern, the ground, there's pieces of pottery or ceramic pieces from, I'm guessing, the pottery that they used to take the water from the cistern. It's all over here. There's pieces of it, various thicknesses. What I really love about this place more than anything is the setting. The fact that it's built into this cliffside and in this tiny little bay, you can imagine these ships coming in and unloading and loading on the pier down there. The wind has really picked up and uh, the sea is terrible right now. And so we came to this little spot and uh, we're doing the audio recording because we're hiding from the wind. Yeah, we're in the west courtyard. And I don't know when the church was built, but it's pre pretty cool. This church is like this big. Yeah, it's really small. Uh, yeah, I just rock. love that. And uh, an amazing, yeah, an amazing site to be built in the side of the rock. It's the church that we're gonna go to. Um, way up there. I think my favorite thing was this tiny little bay. I mean, yeah. I could totally imagine some boats coming here and unloading on that little pier that they built. Yeah, I think it's really I cool. Know. Yeah, it is cool. And I love the cistern and the steps going down in the cistern. Yeah, and that you the, can walk like a, into the water. Yeah, curved stairway going down into the cistern. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. cool. And I, the one thing I wish that was at the archeological site was a, a drawing of what it might have looked like when it was fully intact. That would be yeah, super helpful. That would be cool. I mean, you can imagine the pillars and the seating over here in the courtyard, and um, but it would be really neat to see what it was used for, uh, some kind of drawing. So anyway, amazing site with the lighthouse to one side over to our left totally lost to the west <laughs> and then the um, the church over in the east in this tiny little bay hey everyone thanks so much for watching if you like the video please like and subscribe if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comments area below we love to read your comments for sure <laughs> we'll see you next time on sailing blackbird bye Too bad the water's not more blue.